Uh, actually, I need to do this. Uh, I'm going to do this. And I do this. And we're going to start in a three, and a two, and a one. It's March 15th, 2020. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. We've been determined length, episode number 546. And we have a, a special guest on this, which originally was for one topic, but now we're doing another topic. But he's very welcome to be in this topic too because he would like to so welcome our our cubs is tony hello <laughs> uh, uh, happy to be here yeah uh so just to, to, to let you all know originally we were going to but because of certain situations we decided to hold off on it don't worry Fair. we'll get to that in another show. But today, what are we talking about, Gary? Well, we're talking about a whole different kind of kink. One that no one has probably even thought much about to today. <laughs> I'm not sure how kinky it is, though. Uh, I'm sure that there are some people out there that are kind of, you know, uh, all about being a bug chaser of a different oh, kind. Oh, queen. <laughs> Girl. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, but I hear is, it comes, I comes hear out it. loud does not recommend the fetish of bug <laughs> <laughs> What I hear is you is not ready for this. That's what I'm hearing. No, right I now. Not. <laughs> is anyone ready? <laughs> hold on, hold on. I did not give consent. Touche. <laughs> Two of us are wearing consent as my foreplay shirts, by the way. <laughs> anyway. Well, it's speaking okay. of consent and shirts. Both y'all wearing consent is is my foreplay shirts, and I happen to be wearing the illustrious, well quoted and uh, authorized bear run definition shirt that says a combination of buffets, dance parties, and butt stuff, as coined by Mr. Raymond Smith. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'm actually uh, on a, a smoking bear shirt. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Hmm, maybe that's so, uh, another thing that we need to add to our lineup too, something like that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Anyways, moving on. So we were going to do a Let's Talk About Kink uh, show today, and it was going to be focused on gear, and Tony is our illustrious guest who was going to talk about that. However, <laughs> uh, world news dynamics have drastically uh, garnered attention and focus, and everybody can't stop talking about this bitch, uh, Miss Novel Coronavirus, you know, 2019 <laughs> her and her title are uh not welcome so <laughs> she's so last year <laughs> yet and yet and yet she is impacting 2020 in various ways yes um so yeah like uh, this is really more about like what's in the news kind of a topic show because <laughs> We are recording this on Sunday, March 15th, as Jeff was saying, and... Where the Ides of March. I mean, literally. 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 <laughs> yeah. um, a whole bunch of things have happened. Um, mm -hmm. I'll start with the personal, and then we'll kind of go to the, to the other bigger thing in a way. So, uh, last week, things started escalating in terms of... Um, the number of cases uh, presumptive and uh, confirmed for individuals who have COVID-19, which, by the way, just so everyone's aware, COVID-19 is the official name. Uh, coronavirus is the category of viruses, um, kind of like rhinovirus. Which, it, um, yeah, which includes things like uh, SARS, MERS, and uh, even the common cold. Yeah. yeah. So 
uh, we're we're jumping right in, presuming that some people got some education on on this kind of stuff. Uh, so if you haven't, please go to the CDC website, uh, you know, or you know, Google it from a reputable source. Uh, so yeah, uh, the cases were rising, and in the state of Pennsylvania on Thursday, uh, the governor Tom Wolf made a public uh, announcement about recommendations for sizes of group gatherings and then uh, where i live our county executive uh, basically repeated the same things and i had been given the heads up that there were these press conferences coming and the reason why i'm talking about it is because it directly was going to impact the dredge fur event that i helped coordinate which is in three weeks um Oops. so that very night uh we had an emergency committee meeting to discuss the impacts and the balance of technically the threshold given for recommendation to not have an event was 250. And I already knew that based on our attendance and registration, the way things were going, we were going to be under that. So then it became a matter of do we or do we not have an event? We as a committee had the luxury of time because we are ahead of when we were having our event. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, we made the decision that we're going to postpone the event and made the announcement the next 24 hours later after reaching out to our venue partners who we have contracts with. Um, and we're currently working through this whole process. And we'll talk more about this in, in a little bit, like why things are very much in fluid and in flux for a lot of events because mm -hmm. there's so much that goes into the planning and, and aspects. So that said, Friday, so this very weekend on Thursday night when my committee – is having this executive like quick you know emergency meeting texas bear roundup in dallas texas is kicking off it is yeah. literally yeah. happening people have traveled vendors have arrived in dallas like people have checked into a hotel friday morning wayne davis and the board of the dallas bears who host tbru have a meeting with their local uh government and Unfortunately, my understanding is they were told to shut down. And that to me is devastating as a person who puts on an event to be told basically like you kind of have no choice because of the size mm -hmm. of the event and the population that you cannot hold it. And it's already underway. Mm -hmm. um, I have it from a very good reputable source that Wayne was devastated. That's my word given the description of how he uh, was seen. Um, and I don't blame in any way. I mean, I can't imagine being in the midst of putting a year's worth of time and energy into something. And Wayne, like several of us who put on runs, have been doing this thing for years. And to just suddenly have the whole thing come to a crashing halt. Yeah. And you kind of don't have control. And I'm not saying that Wayne's controlling. Um, but you, when you have momentum and yeah. all this energy and effort, you just aren't expecting things to, yeah. to derail that way. You don't expect a brick wall. Uh, yeah. Well, right. And and so it's understandable that you become emotional and you don't know how mm -hmm. to like process and handle. Like you can be the best emergency management incident command negotiator, like coordinator, but it's different when it doesn't directly impact you in a way. Like you're mm -hmm. you're even if you're just one step removed. So, TBR, you got yeah. canceled as of like, I think about ten or eleven thirty in the morning on Friday after people had already arrived and everything was going. Yeah. Um, to kind of add a different take on it, um, for those of you, I'm in Ohio, and um, so I was singing the men's chorus, right? So on, we had prior to anything like official with our government and whatnot agreed because we had a concert actually on that was going to be on saturday yesterday uh, that we canceled because um of concerns what have you from our members and our audience um and not just ours it was going to be a combined um event with another chorus here in town mm -hmm. um and it was agreed to go ahead and cancel that i'm on the board of the core the men's chorus and we had meetings on Wednesday, we canceled our rehearsal on Wednesday and we met. And then we had another literally emergency meeting on Thursday because literally Thursday morning, our governor announced that we no one can be in groups of 100 or more. Mm -hmm. 
so no more than a hundred. So um, we officially canceled our. Um, we have a concert which was going to be same weekend as Drenched Fur. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, it we were again time was a good thing to have. You know, we were able to discuss within our within the board about the steps that need to be taken, what needs to be done, who needs to be contacted and and um who's doing the contacting to kind of make sure um i don't know i think in pennsylvania i think the same thing happened where schools were closed for three weeks or two weeks um right same thing has happened here and we were our concert was actually going to be at walnut hills high school so there was all these layers that would have potentially prevented us from having the concert even if we wanted to go on with it um and it it the, the rational side of me is going, that makes sense. Everything makes sense. Like there's, there's no way for us to have been able to do this. And fortunately we had time to, you know, make the per- necessary precautions. We hadn't necessarily paid for any, a lot of things yet um, to where it was negatively impacting us. But again, we were three weeks away. I, can't imagine being in a situation where like where TBRU where they've kind of already started and the gears have already started moving and everything is going towards it happening and hmm. all of a sudden it does it you, you you're pretty much told like you need to shut down you have too many people you cannot continue this event right and actually I can have a story to add into that um, I'm a member of the Chicago Hellfire Club and uh, we had an event this past weekend that was supposed to be scheduled. It's our normal monthly get-togethers. We okay. normally have in attendance maybe 50 people. So we're well under that threshold. But the decision was we're still going to cancel anyway just in case because we don't mm-hmm. have enough information yet. And yeah. I give the board credit. They did a tough decision because it didn't come out till Thursday night. And a lot of people were angry. And and unfortunately, that anger, especially like with TBRU and people being there, is directed at the people who made that decision, even though it wasn't their call. Yeah, the yeah. government and the hotel <laughs> made that call for them. Well, and so you bring up an excellent point, Tony, because for us, we with with Drench Fur, we did not come under that avenue. Mm-hmm. Like we we had the responsibility slash power decision making to have the event or not have the event. And we had a very healthy debate and discussion on our emergency call about, do we, do we not? And what are the impacts? How many people could make it? How many people would make it? And then what Mm -hmm. do you do from there? Because we've already contracted to a certain attendance. We've already paid fully the hotel bill in advance. Mm -hmm. So, and that's a certain expected amount of people to come. Like there's, there's wheels that are already turning like it's a machine and there's a lot of stuff going on and to change direction let alone to just outright stop is not something that you can do like a flick of a light switch um yeah so you you find yourself in this moment of like well what are the options and how do we proceed and that's because we have the benefit of foresight to see sort of what's coming and to make Uh some decisions versus what happened with tbru for wayne and them where they were just like I mean, it, it's this isn't a good analogy, but it's kind of like if you're in the back room having fun and someone comes in and turns the lights on and tells you to get the fuck out, like now, like yeah. you're already you're already in a place in a space having a good time, feeling comfortable there, and then suddenly mm-hmm. it all just ends. The bubble uh, burst. Yeah. Yeah. And so many individuals are impacted, not just the people attending. But I mean, and, and also like it's sort of obvious if you think one circle or one level out, all the vendors, people who mm-hmm. have invested time and money and inventory and travel like to be there because they have a business because they're trying to, you know, support themselves and put a roof over their mm-hmm. head. They suddenly now don't have an income because they can't sell anything because, you know, there isn't going to be an audience and they're being asked to leave. And then all the reciprocal, like you go another layer, all the other businesses 
So Mm -hmm. not only is the hotel necessarily losing out in like food and beverage sales of like walk-in business from the event being there, then all the local transportation companies, any periphery businesses, local bars, restaurants, um, you name it, grocery stores, gas stations, like everything that's an ecosystem around the event is affected. Yeah. And so, you know, a, a good portion of small businesses are directly impacted by decisions like this. Yeah. And I don't think necessarily that sometimes people think about that. Like, and, and I get it. We all live in a, in a kind of a focused world in a bubble. And we think about how it directly impacts us and says like, you know, well, what about me? Like I was here to have a good time. You know, like I, I invested my time and my money and my travel and I, you know, paid for a hotel room and on and on. And yeah. On. Yep. I mean, well, one of the, one thing we need to look at this is that it is something that our community has actually seen before. Mm-hmm. We witnessed this with HIV. It was yeah. a different situation. It took longer. It took a greater amount of time. But we as a community changed what we did. Um, yeah. We started doing different things. We started handling things better. We're going to have to do the same thing just in a much shorter time frame here. Yeah. And in a different way. That's a good because way. HIV yeah. being... You know, an STD is transmitted differently. We could gather together in a big group at that point in time still. It's just, you know, bodily fluids are the issue with the the exchanges. In this case, it's not that easy. um, Fair. And people just need to remember that a lot of this isn't, it, it really isn't about you it is about the entire society so it is about you in some sense but it's also about Mm -hmm. everybody else making sure that yeah you don't get sick that we Mm -hmm. you know try to mitigate uh as much of the spread of uh, the disease until we can get a satisfactory treatment and Mm -hmm. right now we don't have one because uh yet and and a lot of people around the entire world are being affected by it. And so, the, I mean, there's you could take the basic precautions. Like, it, it hasn't really blown up until the last few weeks, even though it really did start, like, last year. That's what the 19 refers to. Mm-hmm. Um, and, it, and it's just taking those those steps, making sure to, to you know, stay clean, uh, just uh, basic hygiene um, and uh, taking care of yourself. If you could work from home, work from home. Um, that way uh, you're you're not necessarily in an office environment, even though the janitors, God bless them, <laughs> are key, keeping, <laughs> keeping your facilities clean. But still yeah. with a lot of people in there, just one person who um, is infected and uh, coughing can... Uh, start spreading it because it's so much easier to spread than some of the other diseases that we have. In fact, my job, which I never thought they would ever allow us to work from home, is working on getting us to work from home. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I think that's the case across the nation. I think there's mm-hmm. lots of employers who are looking at: <clears throat> is this something that task can be achieved remotely? If so, how do we do that? Mm-hmm. Like our our building is still we're we're dealing with a lot of transition at my company right now and so part of that is dealing with this at the same time um several of us have the opportunity to work from home but um our currently our company is not yet saying like is basically closing down building and telling everyone to work from home like we're it's, it's at your discretion um, to work from home, um, which is fair. You know, I think every company, every, everything is kind of doing what they need to do or feel like they need to do, um, to hopefully help in some ways. Um, I'm a fan of making your own choices in certain things, situations like this, um, prior to everything going on. Um, I was okay with like moving on with like our concerts and everything else, but now I'm realizing like it's not really just about us. And when you think about 
just think about a chorus and how close everyone is on stage and you know and um that could potentially be like i mean just 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 to think about it i'm going oh well you know you definitely can't do three feet away from each other (laughs) or, or whatever and make it be a performance of some well it could work but it would just be really weird and <clears throat> yeah and one one thing i would point out is so everybody tries to make this comparison to the flu um which isn't really accurate because the flu comes in waves and it doesn't tend to take out 50 percent of your workforce at the same time and that's where businesses are right now concerned because if you suddenly lose 50 percent of your workers you're not in business and True. that's why they're they're saying, hey, work from home. We know you're not mm-hmm. going to get as much done, but we would rather you get 80% of your work done than get 0% done. True. If you get sick. Yeah. Right. And, and you're out for two weeks if you're sick. <clears throat> and potentially, so the one of the things about, the, about COVID-19 last I saw, um, I also want to make sh- sure that everyone's aware, like, well, I do work for a government entity, which is the Department of Health. I'm not speaking on their behalf. So there's my, <laughs> there's my little like disclaimer. Um, eighty percent of cases of individuals that have COVID nineteen have ba- basic mild symptoms. Like they're they're not severe. They're not in danger of concern. You're you know it's kind of like any other illness. You're discomforted, like you know, and you've got these things going on, but it doesn't knock you down um, and take you out, so to speak. So Mm -hmm. it's the other 20% or the bigger issue, the individuals that are susceptible, that don't have as good of an immune system, Mm -hmm. um, that are not as well protected in terms of their personal health and their their space. So when it comes to the bear community and events, like, Damon, you're talking about, like, having the men's course and still having a concert. You know, when you're looking at, like, the concept of community mitigation, which is steps taken to prevent or diminish and, and reduce the amount of transference of, of mm-hmm. the virus in this case. Social distancing is one of these things that we're talking about, which is where you keep you know yourself at a distance from other individuals. So you don't handshake, um, you don't fist bump, uh, you know, and now we're moving into, we don't even like touch elbows or anything. Like you just literally like keep a distance and you might wave or bow or say hello, <laughs> right. Jazz hands, whatever works. Hey, um, hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hi. Yes. <laughs> well, Hi. I've seen that one too on live. Yes, I have seen that one. Yes. So, bear, bear runs. Yeah, bear bear runs don't do that. Uh, I'm also going to go as far to say leather events don't do that. Like, the, and this is one of the things that was having a discussion with me about my event. Um, from someone who's professional and in the field, you know, of public health was, you know, talking about like what steps there could be. And originally before we got to where we are now, it was, you know, we inquired with the venues, like, do you, what are the steps you're taking, you know, and what do you have in terms of like sanitizing, you know, stations and protocols and stuff like that. Cause it was more about like making this space habitable and reducing mm-hmm. risk from mm-hmm. their point of view, not so much about, us because i knew full well like we could have the event but there is no way i'm going to be able to keep everybody in their separate bubble that is not what this event is about like yeah so um we've moved beyond that we're we are far beyond the we can still have an event and try to be safe about it now it really becomes more about the judicious and the morality issue of having an event knowing that you are mm-hmm. basically creating the hot, the the space and, and the hosting opportunity for people yeah. to to contract. Yeah, and that's the thing that like I've been reading on Twitter here and there about like some people are not caring. I don't I, I hate to kind of generalize it that way, but that's kind of what I feel about it. People are just not caring. Like they're still going out, they're still doing things. They may have a fever. They may may name you know whatever, and they're still going to things and doing things and. And so, which is fine, you know, I, w- I don't want to say it's fine, but like, okay, like you are taking the risk. You're going out there. You're doing what you need to do. You're trying to live your life without, you know, spirit, fear, whatever. And those are the ones that are probably going to be the ones that either get sick or get someone else sick. Like, 
And again, like going to a, a bear run, we've all been to them. We've been to many of them, you know, or, oh, yeah. you know, are in some ways, are in some, well, are some kind of event where a bunch of people are gathering, a well, con, yeah. a, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, some of us have been to multiple kind of things over there. And the, I mean, you see your friend for the first time in a year that you haven't talked to or you've only been talking to maybe briefly and you finally get to see them. You know what your first reaction is going to be. You're going to want to touch them. You're going to want to like hug them or kiss them or whatever, um, depending on how friendly you are, maybe more. But like the whole idea is that you're, you're, you're going to interact with them. And, and like, just then imagine that like 10, 20, a hundred fold. And that's a bear run. That's an event. That's where people are like congregating and getting together. And in the gentlest sense, co-mingling, you know, so Mm -hmm. we, we know that that's how diseases are spread. People don't sometimes make the best hygiene choices. We, we've seen that, you know, so it's, you know, they're, they're meant to happen. So that's where the risk kind of comes in and where events need to seriously think about and consider what they're going to do or what they can do, you know? Um, and, and that um, brings up a, a point, Damon, that, you know, people had been throwing around a certain word that, like, I personally am annoyed by because I feel like there are people expressing opinion who feel that they have a right to say so. And while I get free speech, there's a point where it's kind of like, but you are probably not an authority figure. And you saying these things are passing judgment on those that have the responsibility. And more so, if you're not attending, you're not invested, you're not involved, (laughs) Mary, shut your hole. I (laughs) don't have time for you and your soapbox moment to like discuss publicly or to like, suddenly try to hold people accountable for their decisions like Mm -hmm. you know what you would do if you were in the situation i'm sorry like i like you know and maybe i'm wrong maybe some of these people do have a background and they have a right to say that but like i don't know that about you so to make stances and claims about well if you hold the event you're completely liable for everything that happens excuse you like I'm sorry, like, are you, are you a, a, in the legal practice? Like, are you yeah. in the medical field? And uh, nobody asked you. And if you think the people that organize events are not already aware of this, obviously you don't know them. Most individuals who put on events do not take it lightly when these type of things come around. It becomes very serious. And you mm-hmm. start combing through your information, your insurance policies, your contracts. Like, you start figuring out, like, is this a thing that anybody predicted? Is it covered? Like, how mm-hmm. do you go about that? And a lot of people are finding out in unfortunate, surprising ways that this is not something predictable. This is not something that's covered. It is not considered bioterrorism. It is not mm-hmm. necessarily in all circles considered an act of God or act of nature. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's a, there's so much dynamically that has to, you know, be taken into account. And while I can appreciate that people feel that they can make public statements or semi-public statements or whatever and be like, just cancel the damn thing, do do the right thing, and then give everybody their money back. <laughs> That's nice. And my feeling on it is if if it's possible, it will be done. But you don't know what's involved in that. And I think that yeah. that's a person who's not aware of like how business operates. Yeah. So I will go ahead, Damon. Well, I would just say that I, I will admit if I hadn't been like on the board of this core of the chorus and known all the ins and outs about how certain things are done, like how venues are chosen and how contracts are set up and all of those other factors, I could probably be one of those like naysay. I I probably wouldn't personally, but you know, like I could potentially be one of those naysayers. Like, well, why don't you just cancel the event and give everyone their money back, kind of thing. Like, I could see that being a thing, but knowing what I know now and and been following certain things for years, like, th- like there, that's not that's that's not how that's not how it goes, honey. That's not how that's not how easy it is. Like, there there are steps to be taken. There are things that may need to be paid for that are unavoidable because they've like certain things have already been set in place. Cause an event while 
it has not happened yet, there are costs and whatnot that are involved prior to that event happening that need to be set up in order for the event to happen on that date at that certain time. So, like, it becomes much more difficult to just go, oh, well, we've canceled the event. Like, here, everyone, here's your checks for your entire registration fee and any extras that you paid for and 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 be fine with it and be done with it. Like, I just, I know that that's, I know now and probably for several years that that's never going to be the case. And, Only and in one rare thing, occasion. Go ahead. Something go ahead. Else. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead, Tommy. One thing I was going to actually suggest is another thing to watch out for is the people who are angry at the cancellations. Like, how dare you tell me I can't go out and socialize? But here's the thing. How many of us know every single run we're going to catch a cold afterwards? We know this. This isn't surprising. We know that we're in proximity and we're going to catch something from somebody. So mm -hmm. why are we getting upset that the organizers turned around and said, no, we don't want to do this this time. There should be no yeah. one being upset about that. <laughs> Especially yeah. when, when it could be worse than kennel cough. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, and and that's one of the things, you know, like I had made a statement uh, prior to our actual announcement about postponing Dredge for 16. We I had made an announcement, um, hat tip to Wes uh, Fisher out at um, yeah. Western Exposure in Palm Springs, because he put up a beautiful long post about like, here's what we're dealing with. And for him, it's a different dynamic. He's it's a business. It's not a nonprofit. It's the thing mm -hmm. that puts the roof over his head and the, and the food on the table like he and Brian legitimately operate this business to have these monthly events or multiple times a month events. And to be told, like, you may not be able to do this means you don't have an income, which is different mm -hmm. than like a nonprofit. But the reality is there are businesses involved unless you're going to a space that does not operate as a business and would not take a hit financially. Everybody is going to end up with a loss of some sort. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the hotel, like as an example with my event, has exclusivity, like to us, not having the event suddenly means we're looking at hundreds of nights not being paid for. None of that income's coming in. And mm -hmm. staff that was expected and scheduled is not going to have work to do. Uh, mm -hmm. The purveyors that we're going to supply things for that weekend suddenly don't have that anymore. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, like that's why you pay in advance for things to stock up, to supply, to appropriately be ready for this kind of business. And especially for businesses that do not have this kind of business all the time. Yes, yeah. it's very different if you live in a major metropolitan area and they are just hopping. You know what I mean? And like they've got stuff going, you know, 24 seven all the time. And this is business as usual. That's a different landscape, but not many businesses operate that mm -hmm. way. So you have to uh, – I say you have to take that into account. That becomes a big piece of you know what's happening in the decision-making power. And more mm -hmm. so, like for Wayne and them at TBRU, they were in the middle of all that. Like not only had they already paid things in advance, they were going to do things. Like Friday morning when they're told to shut down, that hotel had probably a full complement of staff and was going to have a function or functions throughout the day. They already were going to do things. So they mm -hmm. already had the rentals for the equipment, the, you know, the contracts and the invoices set up for all the things that they needed, food and beverage stuff and all the periphery that goes with that, the staff that cleans the hotel and all. I mean, like, there's so much that I think people just are uh, regretfully unaware of that, you know, are the background pieces that make that kind of thing happen. And to just suddenly mm -hmm. have it yanked or to stop, even if it's in advance – you know, we I will say we said to the hotel, we realize that it is not an easy decision to make and it is not a wonderful conversation to have with you to tell you that we will not be having the event here because we know you're relying on this event coming in. You've planned mm -hmm. for this event to happen and to just suddenly yeah. tell you that we're not going to have it because then we went the next level and we actually talked about like, well, if we did try to have it, who would show up and what would be the impacts? And more importantly, what if staffing wise you can't handle it so let's yeah. say that at our event 100 people showed up yet mm -hmm. i lose two to three of my committee members just for work because their industries and their work require them to work because 
let's say you have an operation that's on the West Coast in Washington and it's been shut down. So the uh-huh. workload gets shifted and now you're on call 24-7 for this thing. Let's say you have someone who works in, in medical and now they're on call 24-7. Mm-hmm. Worse yet, let's say that people who are organizing it get sick. And now they exactly. you don't have the staffing. Um, I said that to, to our host facilities. I was like, it would be detrimental if we're still trying to have the event and you can't even host us because you don't have staff. Like you don't have a complement of people. Like it's mm-hmm. not just us insular, like in our little pocket. Like it's much bigger than that. And yeah. go ahead, Tony. I was going to say, and, and like for my case, uh, my work actually has restrictions on what I can do. If I go outside of our service area, I am have to be self quarantined for a month afterwards. That's our policy going forward. Wow. So if I went to your event, I would be forced to stay at home for a month and not go into the office. If my job requires me to go into the office, I can't do the trip. Mm. And like That's I said, a good to way to think about things. Yeah. Well, and like I said to the hotel, I said, we're just playing devil's advocate. But what if during the midst of the event, we have to go on lockdown? Like it gets so severe, we can't even leave. Mm. I was like, who wants to be trapped? I'm like, like, granted, this is a hotel, but I use the cruise ships as examples. Those people went on a vacation and they were going to be gone for X number of days and nights. It was a pleasant getaway. And that was the expectation. And suddenly, not only is that not what's going to happen for you, but you can't leave. You can't go anywhere. You are now forced to live for X amount of time, not necessarily as a prisoner, but it could be, you know, construed that way because you're not allowed to do things. My thought was mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's great. And it's a hotel and there's a pool and stuff, but there comes a point where you, like you can only do so much. Oh, and on those cruises, you did not have access to any of the facilities. You were locked in your room. And imagine yeah. how small those rooms are and how you would feel after eight right. days of being in that itty bitty little room. Right. Yeah. And, and that's the, probably, you know, part of that whole, you know, isolation of the individual to keep the spread from happening. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it's not delicate or easy in, in any measure. Mm-hmm. And I felt bad for the hotel because we were having the conversation with them before more stuff was being announced before more things were coming. We weren't in front of it, but we were right on the edge of things mm-hmm. happening where the spread is continuing. The number of cases are going to go up, like more quarantine is going to happen. Like, so it is, it's, it's different. And where you were in the timeline, in the spacing of things is huge. Yeah. And so I want to go back to something you had said, Tony, earlier about how, like, we as a as a gay community have kind of faced something parallel. I don't even know if I want to say yeah. similar, but it's not in similar, the, but yeah. right, but in the uh, uh, efforts of saying that, like, we've had a virus that has you know done things, I will own that on you know my Facebook. I've repeated a couple of memes, and one of them was, you know, what is it? It said like straight people, you know, commenting yeah. about, I can't believe the government would not do anything. It just let thousands of people die. And then it says gays. And all it is is a picture of the AIDS memorial quilt. Yeah. There's your example, kids. Like, understandably, we're a little touchy, just a little mm-hmm. tender about this issue because we went through the HIV epidemic in the 80s and felt that people were not listening, not taking it seriously. And so many lives were lost when in fact government could have done something sooner, faster, quicker, more effectively, and yet did it. Mm-hmm. And so we ended up with things like ACT UP and you know these grassroots kind of entities basically demanding and requesting that something happen. And the reason I bring that up is because I really am hoping beyond hope that none of that has to happen this time, that, that all the steps that are being taken by government bodies specifically are doing that mitigation that are helping, Mm -hmm. um, you know, reduce the curve as we say, so that all the systems that sustain us can handle what happens as opposed to breaking things because the the cases of of individuals are so high that like, we just, it can't happen. It's not going to like, we're just effectively going to be broken in a way. Um, and I think that when people can kind of, hopefully have a bigger, broader world perspective, a more global one. And I don't mean like about other nations necessarily, but you know, just 
taking it outside of their their little bubble, so to speak, and recognizing all the other things that they might, you know, take a step back and mm-hmm. you know be a little bit more serious about it, um, you know, and and maybe not so much focus on the insanity of what people are doing, especially in their their panic shopping stuff that's going on. Um, well, and the panic is actually a good parallel. Um, remember, at the beginning of the epidemic, back in the eighties, people had wild theories about what caused it and how to treat it. And mm-hmm. even even the people that weren't affected, oh well, it was a sign of what was to come. You deserve it. Whatever. Um, mm-hmm. That was because of a lack of knowledge, a lack of education, a lack of awareness of what was going on. We in the community had to make major changes to stop the spread. So we changed our behavior. As a society, we have to change our behavior. Right. Yeah. And there's going to be people who will refuse to change. There was people who refused to change then, too. Right. But mm-hmm. if most of us make that change, we will get through it. Yeah. And and understand that the hope and the expectation is, is that, you know, we're kind of, uh, as a nation, as the U.S., we're preparing for the storm that's coming that we've already seen take place in other countries. Um you know, between China and South Korea and Italy, and you know, the list kind of goes on. The hope is, is that we can we're taking enough early steps to keep the bad from being really bad. Uh, yeah. You know, and and work through that because currently, while we do have testing, access to testing is a is a touchy subject. Um, you know, the reality is is that any personal care physician, any primary doctor, can request a, a COVID nineteen test if you meet the criteria. CDC has set up certain specific items that are precursors, like basically triage and fielding, like do you need to have a test? The key ones are, mm-hmm. have you been in touch with someone who's been diagnosed? Have you traveled abroad to a hot zone? You know, do you have these symptomologies? A temperature of over a fever with 101 or more, dry cough, like and understand the differences between allergy and flu and COVID-19. Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of aspects to kind of play into that. And that's why you should be talking to medical professionals about you specifically and not using WebMD or Facebook or Lord knows what, trying to diagnose like what your situation is. Um, yeah. But you what, know, I just can't get my medical news from Twitter. <laughs> if your doctor's on Twitter, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> difficult to gauge. You know, and Dr. Oz and the doctors, like, you know, whatever, that, that doesn't count. Um, so the, the reality is you're trying to figure out, like, what you can do and how you handle those things. Um, so once you get tested, like, you go into, like, an isolation, you know, kind of quarantine phase. But we don't have a vaccine. We don't have a cure. You basically weather the storm. You... Let the immune system in your body go through what's going to happen. If medical care is needed, then that's the like the next phase of it is that you go to a facility, um, whether it be a you know actual hospital in your area that's longstanding, or if it comes to it, makeshift pop up you know uh, facility yeah. units. That's part of what emergency management and incident management is, is taking places like arenas and stadiums and school gymnasiums or whatever that is a, a space that can host people and suddenly turning it into, you know, uh, a temporary hospital, basically, or a healthcare facility where people can be cared for if they need it. And one thing I would caution is, like, earlier we were talking about, like, trying to get the tests. Um, if you don't have symptoms, don't get a test because there's a limited number of tests. And you're taking it away from someone else to have it. You mm-hmm. testing negative for it helps no one. You well, and really have wasted it. And that's the the good point of like only medical individuals are the ones that can prescribe having the test yes. at this point. Whether it's your local department of health, whether it's a doctor directly, you know, a care facility of any sort, the CDC, the state government, like all of those are entities that have the right to make that decision. That's why it's not publicly available, like you know, twenty three and Me or something, you know, and you can just like request yeah. a you know a home test. Like it, it's not that simple. And lots of different entities are creating tests. They have different varying times and how long it takes to get results. Um, and different accuracy, right? And and so you know, the whole point is to do as best as possible to make it as accurate. And even then, what we're looking at is we're just diagnosing. We don't have strategic steps in place to 
effectively say, you know, as an example, Damon, if you do these four things, like you will be better and, you know, survive this and so on and so forth. Like we have things that can make you, you know, uh, like increase your chances of coping with it, but it's not a guarantee because everybody is individual. Um, and that's why, you know, there's this race to try to, you know, determine if we can make a vaccine and how that works, but that takes time. It takes testing. That's why science is so important um, to apply in this case, you know, not just the scientific method, but, you know, study and, and things. I was seeing that there was an article and I'm going to preface this as, you know, I did not read fully and know how accurate it is, but you know, uh, if there's going to be any type of testing and you're not necessarily going to do it on humans and you have to have another viable option. And, you know, if it's going to be an animal, like, will the animal react to it or not? Like how, you know, good is that efficacy aside? It's just a matter of like, what are, what are you doing and how -hmm. will it work? And so, yeah, I mean, we're we're in the midst of something that's really unprecedented on so many fronts, and people yeah. are trying to determine what to do next. Um, and one part is is we as a society, even in the bear community, we need to be patient. We need to give the time for that information to come out. So if you're out true. there demanding that, oh my God, I have to have the test now, you're not going to help anyone. Yeah, if, if you're, you're not demanding that all of this happens, you're going to hurt things, not help. Yeah. And since our future is a big question mark right now, because we don't know what's coming for sure. We don't know. We can't plan. We can't do all of that stuff. A lot of people are getting anxious and mm-hmm. making rash decisions. Like let's go get toilet paper. Uh, <laughs> and Y'all, it may not actually be I still be don't understand what the toilet paper is besides the fact that it could be an alternative for Kleenex, but they're not selling out of Kleenex. It's the toilet paper. I'm like, start with the Kleenex, then move to the y'all. My, my so guess, guess, y'all. Prioritize here. All right. First, my Tony, your is, guess. My guess is that when people get sick, uh, the last thing you want to deal with is not having toilet paper. So they are preparing that they're going to have to use it. That's fine, I mean, but COVID-19 doesn't make you shit yourself. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. This is not a, a nasty GI tract-based flu. It's not neurovirus, which is infamous for making both ends of you just like an open faucet, basically. Having having yeah. been a person who's been, like, indirectly and around people who've been affected, trust. Like, this is nothing yeah. like that. So... Yeah. I'm kind of like, I get that, like, you want to be prepared. I'm more cautiously and scared about the fact that, like, how many people did not have TP at home or barely get by on toilet paper? And that's why you suddenly are stocking up. Like, seriously? Like, I can't even. Do you only buy a four pack when you need it? Like, we <laughs> in a consumer society, you can buy, like, a dozen rolls, 16, 18, two, 24 rolls. Like, you can yeah. buy a goddamn mega roll if you need to. I mean, like, it was, and there's I, alternatives. Was, yeah. What did you as do someone pointed toilet out paper? to me, as someone pointed out to me, if I don't have toilet paper, I have other things I can use. And this is to go back to like my grandparents and my great grandparents' generation, where you didn't really have indoor plumbing. There was something called the Sears of Roebuck catalog, and you just <laughs> tore the sheet off of it because it was paper. It worked. Was it effective? Eh, but it did something. Like it and. Helped. Well, and and that's the thing. Like, I see people investing in buying Amazon, like, do-it-yourself bidet kits, like, to attach to toilets so they can reduce the amount of toilet paper that they do. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Oh. Well, (laughs) exactly. I I just will say, I, 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 you know, you know, we, like, Jim, Jim was big on the couponing, and he still is in some ways. So we've had toilet paper for a while. So we're good. Like, like... Like, like the but this was like before. Like, 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 I just got a nice twenty-four pack. I'm good, good for a long out. time. Yeah, I've got. We've gotten. We had. We've had. I mean, we. Yeah, we. You know, we're good. Like that was been the biggest thing. And, and like, like I'm sitting here. Like again, I was like everyone else. Like, why is this so important? But whatever. I get it. But like <sighs> hoarding and all this stuff and so much like over stuff. I'm. 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 I don't. I, I guess I understand, but I don't understand. Like, also for, hoarding hoarding uh, uh, face masks. Yeah, do, don't don't do that. And, and and here's why: because 
they haven't been popular until now in in the United States. So there's a limited supply. Let's save those for the people who really need it, known as health professionals who are dealing with the sick people. Well, yeah. and, and here's the thing, like as an educational moment, there are different kinds of masks and most people are thinking about like surgical masks. And only one type of mask is effective in this type of a scenario. A respirator mask. And so all the rest of the masks, those are only effective for people who are sick to keep them from putting mm -hmm. out the droplets, as we say, to infect yeah. other people and certain yeah. on surfaces. So, so like if you if you've ever gone to a doctor's office, like when the flu season kits, like there's usually like over in the corner, there's usually like a thing of hand sanitizer and there's a thing of mask. And above the thing of mask, they always always says, if you have these symptoms, like please take a mask. It is not if you are well and healthy and and whatever, like please take a mask. It is if you are coughing, sneezing, have a right. fever, you know, whatever, like you're, that's the whole point of it. Like Gary said, is to like prevent those who are sick already which from, is from another spreading. reason not to hoard masks yeah and I, actually right. i'll point uh there was a cnn town hall happening last night uh, which i was watching and they actually had a, a medical person come on and talk about the differences in the masks and how if you have them donate them it's not going to help you as much as it will help the medical professional who needs it um Mm -hmm. And then likewise, don't drive up demand and make it impossible to find. It's just, again, being patient, being knowledgeable of what's coming. Right. Yeah. So and, and you bring up a good, a good point, Tony, because I also right. saw um, a kind of a meme posting on Facebook yesterday that I liked that said, if you are one of those people who did apocalyptic style shopping, like it didn't say this, but first of all, shame on you. Um, but the reality is, like, if you've hoarded a bunch of stuff, it is now your responsibility to redistribute to those in need. Make a, make a basket, make a kit, put a bag together, drop it off to your elderly neighbor who does not have the opportunity to get out. To a family who has kids that live on a limited income that you know that they can't do that. Do the better thing for the sake of humanity and share things, not keep them to yourselves, you know, and be so, you know, self-centered about it. Well, and, and I thought you, that was a really good point. You've probably seen the article uh, online about the guy who bought 17,000 bottles of sanitizer and Amazon killed his store so he can't sell them now. Mm -hmm. And it's this sob story about it. Uh, to me, it's schadenfreude. You tried to exploit the system and you got burned. Ha ha. Now, buck up, share it properly with other people that need it. That. Well, and, all and, of that. <laughs> so here's an example of like tying into that as it relates actually to drench fur. So in preparation of the event, I was having conversations, um, you know, with our Department of Health about like, what can we do to put the power in people's hands if we're having the event to make them more safe? And we had already investigated and reached out to get promotional items that were sanitizer based. We were told, and this was over a week ago, there were none available. Like, nobody had any ability to fill any orders. That was just not going to be possible. This was also right at the hit time when we find out that Amazon is completely sold out. And all the stores are liquidating. Like, there is no hand sanitizer. There are no wipes. Like, like all this stuff is just disappearing everywhere. And so I was like, well, that sucks. So I kept searching online and looking for different things, you know, and eventually found a way to order enough individual uh, hand sanitizer um, items for us to have at our event at a decent cost. I was not happy about it. It wasn't price gouging, but it was also not cheap. Yeah. And so I ordered it and I was kind of waiting as the days went by for Amazon to inform me and be like, this, you know, this order is being canceled. It can't be fulfilled. We got right to the point where it was about to ship. And knowing that we had postponed the event, I was like, fuck it. I went to Amazon and attempted to cancel the order. And it made me contact the seller. And so I sent the seller a message and flat out said, this order is no longer needed. It was for an event that has been postponed. We would rather give you, the vendor, the merchant, the opportunity to resell this to people in need versus those that don't need it now. Mm -hmm. Within two hours, I got a response. It was The cancellation was approved. Cool. I was like, now that's my experience. My hope is, is that there's going to be able to, you know, because my thought was, Someone somewhere is probably going to buy it, and I'm going to live on the good faith that it's going to go to the hands of the people that need it versus coming to my house where I'm, I don't need it. We're not going to have the event. 
you know? Mm -hmm. So like it's things like that, that, you know, you take into account. And I agree with you, Tony, like, you know, some people were trying to, you know, monetize the system. And while it's cute and it's funny to see these things on Facebook, I'm, I'm not a big fan of people making jokes like, you know, I got a four ply thing, you know, a uh, four roll of two ply cotton L who wants to give me their house. You know what I mean? Like I get the humor behind it. Like you're poking fun at the stuff that's going on at, at the craziness of people's behavior, but that kind of doesn't help, you know, like yeah, it's no. like you're, you're still helping put a spotlight and focus on like kind of that behavior um, that people are being odd, you know, and I get it like sharing the video of the Australian grocery store or whatever store it was and this mass of like a hundred people collecting in the HBA section and literally just decimating the, you know, everything of toilet paper that's around. I was like, I get that like watching it is maybe entertaining and amusing or fun or whatever, but it's like, it's not helping. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's a double edged sword, I guess. Um, and who gets the, a message out of it, whatever the message may be. So yeah, there, the, there's, go ahead. I was going to say one of the problems with uh, the supply issues where people are freaking out about toilet paper, et cetera, is recognize that China was shut down for a month. So if our supplies are coming from them, everything's right. going to be back ordered a little bit. So okay. that's also part of why people are freaking out because we don't know what's not going to be here in two weeks. Um, and and this helps maybe you know in a way spot put the spotlight and shine it back onto like you know what do what do we as a country make like what in house do we offer and there's a cost to that like we want you know to be able to make the most out of every dollar that we get and mm -hmm. I this is my personal opinion like we live in a society where you know while while everything is down to the penny and we're trying to make every ounce of it count. There's a price to pay for that, it, it, metaphorically, which is we want to pay the least for anything. Well, guess what? In order to pay the least for anything, then you're also paying for cheap labor and all the product line and everything that goes into it. And we don't do that here. Mm -hmm. Like our cost of living is different than another country. So it dynamically makes sense that things come in from abroad. And when, when the places they come from are no longer operating, then guess what? Like you don't get to have the things that don't cost pennies to the dollar or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, maybe in perspective, this will be a little bit of an eye-opening experience and a, and a dosage of education to people about, like, what is important. Um, you know, like, I went shopping yesterday. I dynamically waited until I thought most of the kind of busyness was going to go away. And I went to the grocery mm -hmm. store bracing for what I kept seeing people post pictures of. Even locally, people were posting pictures. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, there's going to be hour-long lines. I mean, just, like, all this craziness I'm seeing. And I walk, and I go, all right, the parking lot's not too busy. It's, you know, kind of usual. And I walk in, and I don't really see big lines. And most of the grocery store is pretty average. You know, there's not a whole lot that's, like, you know, missing. The only section of the entire store was notably where the toilet paper roll aisle was. And it was empty, like, bare bone. Like, I ate baby back ribs and licked the sauce off those motherfuckers. <laughs> like, there was nothing <laughs> left. And nice. I was like, damn. Notably, though, right at near the end cap, though, there was a pallet of four roll, like, you know, toilet papers packaging that was there. And notably a sign that said, we are limiting purchases to two per person, which is mm. unfortunate that retail had to do that nationwide and suddenly put a crackdown and be like, don't be crazy. Don't be stingy. Like, you don't need to fill two yeah. shopping carts full of shit. Like, you know, like, yeah. no, no, no. Like, I you know. I had a I saw on Twitter the other yesterday a video. I don't know where it was from, but it was like three women literally fighting mm -hmm. over a cart because one of the the two of them had a cart full of like toilet paper and one of the women just wanted one pack and I think either had taken it or had grabbed it or whatever. And they're literally like fighting, like slapping and punching and grabbing each other fighting. And I'm just like, this is insane that this is a thing but it's people are getting i mean desperate i don't and i, I don't and i don't understand why i but i it's like this is this is the way we are i guess for now well but it's supply and demand i mean yeah something happens on black friday when there's only eight xboxes on sale people True. get stupid and decide i'm going to win mm. well, we and, all and, can win 
and right and there's the thing it's like you know black friday is mostly about things that we don't need quote unquote yeah. and i hate to say it that way i get it uh you know and an, a 99 inch television is impressive you know i people are size queens whatever <laughs> the the thing is is that you know like that's a luxury item toilet paper is borderline necessity you know and Someone did a calculation and I almost shared it because it was on Facebook, but I decided not to. And they broke down and figured out how many pieces of toilet paper a person would use basically in every bowel movement. Like, how much do you need for an average shit? How many shits a day do you take? <laughs> how much toilet paper? Like, they did this whole calculation thing and came up with it. And it was like, for you motherfuckers out there that took like, you know, like, you know, 60 rolls or whatever. I want to see you shit 23 and a half times a day to literally use all that stuff over the course of like a 30 day period. Like, I mean, they put it on blast, like how simple <laughs> the math breaks down. And I was kind of like, damn, I was like, but fair, like, <laughs> you know, it's like, what are you preparing for, for like four months, you know, mm -hmm. and it kind of goes back to the mystery, like, and there's a little bit of humor in this, but it's kind of like, what were y'all doing before? Like. Were you not washing your hands? Were you not cleaning huh? your homes? Like, did you? I don't know, y'all. Like, I've had, that's been my thought for, like, the past, like, month. Is like, like, what were y'all, what were these bitches doing beforehand where now they're suddenly like, I don't have, I need all this toilet paper and I need all these cleaning supplies. Like, bitch, like, what did your house look like beforehand? Were you wiping with, like, the Sears robot calendar? Like, like, catalog because you were out of toilet paper? <laughs> were you not cleaning, like, like disinfecting your shit. Like, where where was this all beforehand? And, and don't get me wrong, I understand stocking up, but mm -hmm. there is a certain point. Like the reason why I myself would get one of those big old like twenty four pack of mega rolls, right. it was be because I could put it into a closet and I wouldn't have to go shopping for it for a long, long time. Yeah, right. But you would buy one twenty four pack. And that's it. Right. You that's would not stock four up. of them or some bullshit. I mean, I if you have a four person, a person house, maybe get two. But yeah, still, uh, it, it's it's one of those things where where they're stocking up and there's like stocking up for the apocalypse. This isn't the apocalypse. Right. It's a serious situation. Mm -hmm. But be reasonable on your stocking up. It's not like uh, we're about to have nuclear winter. People are crazy. Actually, the one that made me laugh the most when I went to the store recently was the complete lack of bottled water anywhere. Mm. People, you have plumbing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you bring up a good point, Tony. Like, I'm still a little puzzled by that one, like, where they're wiping out bottled water. And I was like, yeah. I, I, I don't, don't misunderstand. I can see where things like Flint, Michigan way on your mm -hmm. mind and you say i don't trust my local government i don't trust the federal government or the state government whatever the issue is because you're like y'all fuck that shit up and i'm thinking y'all gonna fuck it up again like where i live or whatever so i could sort of understand that to a point but i'm like uh, do you not realize that there are other measures you can take other than buying that do you know well and likewise mm -hmm. if you haven't been buying bottled water constantly why are you changing your behavior now? That. That right there. Those are the things. Like, no, so, man, that's the thing. There's also like, getting, like, water filters, like the, the Brita pitchers and yeah. such like that. So you can still have, you know, filtered water. But, I mean, bottled water is more for the I'm on the road sort of thing. And, and you want to make sure you have have water for you it's when you're you're going to exercise and it's not something where it's just like you can uh, um, the the like if you're going to work out and if they don't have a thing right. they just have a bunch of bottled water or something you know that's what bottled water is for well and and, and here's the thing is like if there are contaminants foreign substances in your water supply like say for some reason your local plant that supplies water to your area where you live cannot operate. They don't have the capability to do what they normally do. Like a lot of the filtering is about taking out like added things like chemicals, chlorine, you know, the fluoride, these other things. If there's a viral or bacterial thing in the water, the filter don't mean shit. Like 
like for those of you that have lived through these things where they come out and you get told, you basically get warned by the local government to boil your water, like to not drink directly from the tap, to not use it for bathing or whatever. Like, like so a bottle of water ain't going to do you a whole lot of good. Like, well, and, and realize also your bottled water is municipal water from some other city. <laughs> it, you're not getting it off of a mountain spring. So... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm what? stuck. I'm, I'm stuck. I'm, no. I'm stuck on somebody being like, "Bitch, I only buy the like the Fiji shit." My <laughs> shit's expensive. Like people of of you know an economic you know uh, class can afford that. Not everybody out there. Mm-hmm. Although I did see a weird meme that it said like everybody out there buying all the bottled water, but Dasani. What up with that? And literally <laughs> showed a like a whole section of bottled water, and the only thing remaining were cases of Dasani. And I was like. That's weird. Like, and very, like, I, I mean, I think it was more meant in humor than anything, but just the picture to, to go with it, I was yeah. like, that is odd. Like, but like, I, I think one of our issues is just since we don't know where things are going, there's yeah. fear. And yeah. we need to calm down that fear, uh, especially mm-hmm. since we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Bringing it kind of back to bear run type stuff. If you've got a bear run you're, you're going to in the next 60 days, pay attention. Be aware of what's going to go on. Don't assume that it's going to happen. Don't be angry if they have to cancel it. So mm-hmm. let's, let's talk about that, shall we? Because my event is three weeks away. It would it would be wrapping up today in three weeks. At the end of April, that we very well know is Cleveland Leather Annual Weekend, CLAW. And mm-hmm. that exact same weekend is Bears, Bikers, and Bayhem in Gettysburg. Two. Mm-hmm now possibly rival competing events for audience population the exact same weekend. Mm-hmm. And I thought about that this past week. I was like, oh, shit. Well, like, and then like, even go further. The same scale, but like they're both the same weekend. But even go further, you've got events like IML coming up. It is uh-huh. based on contests that happen at other events. Mm. If there yeah. are no other events, what do they have? Right. So... Again, you have to be patient. You have to be flexible. Realize mm-hmm. that it may not be what you had originally intended. Yeah. You can still have fun. You can still go if they have it. But don't be angry if they err on the side of caution. Well, yeah. I, like I, I have. Go ahead, David. Well, I, you know, again, and I keep, I always do like the chorus thing because, you know, that's my life right mm-hmm. now. Um, we start, we are so planning to start co- our rehearsals for our Pride concert. On April 3rd, April something, eight, not April 6th or 7th, 7th, I think. Anyway, April and our concerts in June. And there's a big event going on this year, um, Gala, that is in July. And so everything is being monitored very closely. And they're like, they're saying things now that like you just need to be patient because we're making decisions based on the way the world works, the way the world move is moving. Absolutely. So I'm on the advisory board for one of the local pride organizations that puts on our pride parade and pride fest. And mm-hmm. <laughs> awkwardly at the, that the meeting, uh, there's a discussion about COVID-19 and the president of the organization turns to me and says, well, Gary, as the resident individual who is employed by the local department of health, like, what are your thoughts on this? And I was like, ah, uh, <laughs> But no, I mean, in seriousness, I was like, okay, so I kind of shifted my chair to the end of the table, like, because, like, not everyone could see me right away. And I was like, okay, so let's have a conversation about this. I was like, first of all, we are talking about an event that is at the end of June. It is not even April yet, let alone May. And then that's the end of June. So let's talk cautiously about things that are important today versus things that are important 90 days out, 60 days out, 30 days out two weeks out, like the week before. I'm like, there's a whole spectrum of things to take into account. So we had a good, healthy discussion about it. It was, you know, everybody was already kind of on the same page, but, you know, they wanted to have this kind of open forum and discussion about it. I was like, basically, I was like, it is so far out. Like, what's happening today does not directly impact that based on a timetable. I'm like, we're looking at something that has roughly kind of a six-week window, up to eight weeks, maybe. I'm like, and even then... What happens between now and then is really the key factor. Like you could make yeah. all the contingency plans you want right now, but that means Jack, 
because if the cases go up and we don't, you know, kind of bring down the curve, as we say, and mitigate things to a maintainable level, then yes, it's going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. Well, and there's a reverse of that. If you if we flatten that curve, that means that it will extend out. So events further and further on may have to cancel in to keep our society safe. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, yeah. like I uh, I don't think this is really kind of spilling any tea or, or whatever. I had reached out to Adam, you know, who uh, puts on North American Bear and World Bear Weekend because he was at TBRU. Um, you know, as a vendor and, you know, and that kind of jazz. And so he and I had a conversation and he said people have been, he's been fielding, people have been asking him questions about his events. And he's like, they're, they're, they're later this year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like it was kind of comical. Cause I think he was kind of like, really? Y'all, y'all well, pay attention to the calendar. Like, do you understand like how, how time works? Like, well, he's not going to have anything to say yet. Well, to be honest, also keep in mind, everyone is postponing events. You're eventually going to run out of time to do all of those events. So something will get canceled. Yeah. Um, Things may get canceled. Things may get, may possibly be rescheduled if there's ability to schedule it. And you have to go and take into consideration that they can't just go, oh, well, we were having it in, we were supposed to have it in April. Let's just move it to October. Like that. No, it's not that easy. You know, because right. is the space available? Is the people available? Is everything going to be able to be done at the same time? Or what can we change? And what if well, you can't change everything? And even if you make that kind of a decision, there's all the ripple effects that go with it. So let's say that you have an event that's going to happen soon, and you decide to see if you can postpone it. And there is a window on the calendar, let's say, where all the pieces can fall back together in six months. Mm-hmm. So you decide that's the path you're going to take. Who says that anybody is going to be available in six months or has the, right. has the capability? Like people take time off to go to events. They pay for things to, to be able to travel. So whether or not you have a travel insurance as a factor, can you reschedule? Can you renegotiate? Like, do you have the time off from work? Do you have the capability? Like, or do you just have other shit going on in your life? Like you've already got things planned for that time of year. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, so much stuff, you know, is is really what it's about, and that's ultimately part of why we, as a committee for our the event that I helped put on, we were like, we think the best decision at this point is to just postpone and look at having it in a year, which is mm-hmm. difficult and unfortunate because it basically means we're not having it mm-hmm. this year. Like that, that's just the end result, yeah. and nobody likes that decision at all. Yeah. But we're trying to figure that out and work through it, but it's not as simple as just like, well, let me pick up this thing and then I'm just going to move it right over here. And that's yeah. how easy it is. It, it, it isn't. There's so much other stuff that needs to be uh, put so into many play. Things. And likewise, I would encourage people to be patient because if you have an event that's scheduled for June, for example, don't immediately cancel it now. I mean, because yeah. now you're sending the other message of you should cancel it because there's going to be nobody there. Yeah. Right. Like, I, I mean, I, I, go ahead, Damon. No, I'm just saying, like, I'm holding on to everything for Gala as an example, because that's really the only thing I plan to do this year. Um, and, well, sorry. for right now. Uh, it's no, in Minneapolis under, in July or yeah. June, right? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. It's it's not the heat, it's because, the humidity. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm not worried about that. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm sitting here, like, literally, like, I am making, I am not making any changes until I am informed that I may need to make changes, if that and, makes and, sense. Right, and that's exactly what you should be doing, Damon. In my opinion, like, everybody should be doing that. So, like, let's say, for example, not my event, but, like, people were thinking about going to Claw or to Bears Biker in Mayhem or even IML, you know, uh, in Chicago. Um, I don't even know if they're doing a Bear Pride-ish type event at that time or not. But the reality is that, like, if you've got those things on your calendar and slated, Make the decision that's best for you, but like take a, other things into account. Like, if you cancel, like, is there a timeline? Like, do you have to do it by X factor before it, it mm-hmm. financially affects you? Most cases, yeah. So you get a window of time. Like, people were asking about us with the hotel. They're like, you know, about you know, well, what's happening? Like, are all our rooms canceled? No. Like, do I call the hotel and cancel? Well, you can, but like the reality is, like contractually, they can't charge you. Like weeks Mm -hmm. ahead of time like that's not how any of that is set up um 
But if you have caution and concern, well, then you make your own decision in that case, you know, and then there are requests because we're looking at postponing. People are saying things like, you know, well, even demanding and being like, well, I should get the exact same thing next year that I already had lined up. All right. Like, I hear you. It's valid. Could, we'll could try. You, could, right. Could you let us work on the other stuff before we yeah. get to that? Like, can you give me a, can you give us a day? You like know, maybe, maybe like give us a weekend, like to like, to like make some, like to have a meeting and set stuff up. Like, like, can you give us some breathing room? You know, like, can I get my six feet of space for a minute from the event? Like, can I get, can I get my social distance just, so just, I can just, breathe? <laughs> like, keep in mind, none of the event organizers want to do any of this. Yeah, they just want yeah. to do their event. Trust. Like, it is heartbreaking to work on an event, to bring people together, and then to be like, nope. And it's not because there's a lack of interest or a lack of attendance or mm -hmm. lack of finances. It is purely because you can't. Yeah. And of all the things that people probably want desperately now more than ever is connection. They want to be with people. They want to, like, share space with them. They might want to share DNA with them. I get it. Like, I'm not immune from this. Like, if there's anybody that's stressed out about these things, it may very well be the people that are trying to put on the events. And I'm like, you know, like, people make jokes about bear runs being catered orgies. First of all, I've said it many times. I'll say it again. A catered orgy is far easier to plan, in my opinion. Not that I've done it yet. But <laughs> the reality is... Like, you've still got to, like, take things into account. You know, that's why I, yeah. there's there's all these other things that you kind of have to, to weigh out in that case. And so I am perfectly fine with people finding alternative plans for that, whatever it is. I even said this to the hotel, like, as a humorous point. I was like, ours is a social convention. The whole point of getting together is to experience things together. You could talk about telemedicine and telecommute and, you know, and teleeducation and all that stuff that you want. But our event doesn't work that way. Is it feasible to have like a massive Skype session of video conferencing with 200 people all in their bathtubs at the same time? Like, we look at us. Are we having fun? This is similar to being in a water park. No. No. <laughs> it will not be. Like, you know, like, it's you can only have so many people on a Skype call. Well, there's that. <laughs> you like, realize I now have, I have an image of somebody in a Speedo in a pool with trying to keep a face mask on. It just yeah. doesn't work. <laughs> it might work. It depends on the type of mask. There's no, yeah. there's no, there's no yuck and yum here, people. Like you know, you do you, boo. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's like it, it just some things functionally cannot probably take place. So you do what you can with that. My my hope is that people are, if your event is being postponed and or canceled, make the appropriate plans to do something else, like and invest the the time and the space and that kind of thing. You know, like some people are like, hey, I'm going to go spend time with my family. I'm going to, you know, make wise decisions with this other stuff. Some people are like, well, I guess I got my vacation back, you know, and then I'll plan accordingly from there. Like whatever the case may be. Okay. Um, I, I can give a story, an example of that, that uh, is happened to me just yesterday uh my pup and i we have tickets to go to iml that's our plan um whether or not it happens we may still go because it is then our time together mm -hmm. the hotel will still be there all of the things that are happening in chicago will still be there that we'll still evaluate it as we get closer and see how things are but whether the actual event happens or not we'll probably still go yeah at this at least at this point it looks like we'll still be going so and you actually bring up a really good point tony like technically you could probably still keep your plans in a way just realize that the reason you're getting together will not probably exist or mm -hmm. at least not in the function that it did so yeah, yeah technically everybody that was planning on coming to my event can still plan to come like and they could still keep their hotel reservations they can still go to the hotel at this point, as of today, technically, because um, that isn't <laughs> illegal, I guess. Um, but, like, you know, recognize that, like, the event is not going to happen, you know, and, and there's also some, you know, kind of risk or whatever. Like, just because you go to a hotel doesn't mean that, like, you could necessarily go to any of the shared spaces. Yeah. 
because it could get to that point where it's kind of like, yeah, they, they say, you know, no more than like two dozen in a space or whatever. So that might shut down the restaurant or the bar or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But you're right. Like there's still options and things that you can do. Um, I've seen a ton of this as we wrap up. I want to um, advocate for this. Nikia has been really good in posting on online about like so many small businesses and artists specifically are relying on their income and venues being shut down, events not happening, businesses being closed down affects people's bottom dollars. Um, mm-hmm. You know, in, in the drag community, um, DragCon LA was already announced as, as to be closed and not happening. And actually some uh, producers are being really good about promoting and being like, you will not be able to go to LA to see these queens in person to do meet and greets. But what you can do is buy their merch online. You can buy their music. You can like do their... You know, you can donate money via Venmo or Cash App or Mm -hmm. PayPal. You can um, do all of these things to help support them because this is their income. This is their livelihood. You can still do stuff to help spread the wealth, so to speak, because that's really what you were going to do beforehand. You're just not going to be able to do it in person. Mm -hmm. And another thing I would actually suggest and, and hope that people would do is if you can afford it, don't cancel. Like for your event, if you've already paid for the run pass, don't demand a refund if you can afford to do it because it will offset costs elsewhere. Yeah. I don't know for your event specific. No, no, no. I'm wearing multiple hats. I'm like measuring out what I want to say. Um, (laughs) The reality is like some people do have the affordability of the loss. Others very understandably do not. And so that's oh, a, an individual decision. Like Tubbs yeah. was even saying in the in the live chat about how like if there's one event that you go to a year and it is the only time that you can get off and it is the only time that you get to see people, yes, this could be devastating, like because you because now it's not an option at all. Mm-hmm. So like I, I get it. Like you've got to kind of figure out the yeah. the who, what, where, when of it. And so yeah, there's there's a whole spectrum of things because those of yeah. us that are blessed with like you know, incomes of a higher level and benefits of a certain, you know, thing, Mm -hmm. we have much more flexibility in what we can do in our lives. If you're a person who is most likely and, and statistically, you know, the majority of people living paycheck to paycheck and don't have as much bandwidth or wiggle room to, to be flexible with this kind of stuff, I get it. And so, and I fully agree, you know, if you, if you need the funds, then by all Mm -hmm. means you should be, uh, patient and make the inquiry when you know the steps are explained about what the options are yeah. and and then go from there mm-hmm. so for an example just to kind of wrap again to wrap it up the chorus all our ticketing went through eventbrite um since we are canceling the event we have to refund the money through uh, eventbrite so that's like one of those things like we can't just however part of our notice to um, our people who have bought tickets and what our audience is like, if you wish to donate to the course, because we're a 501c3, we're a nonprofit, like, like you can still donate. Like, if you want to like take that cost, you get it back and then literally just donate it back to the course in some way. We are greatly appreciated, you know, and that's the same thing I think with other, depending on the event, may help. Um, so yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think it's some, it just depends on what you can't afford or can't afford. And, it would be and, up to and, you. Right, and understand that like if there's flexibility for people to help each other, like I think that's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, do what you can. Yes, if an event is going to be postponed or canceled, and they have that opportunity to make a donation to charity to help others in need, absolutely. But there's a lot of what ifs in that scenario mm-hmm. to, to be yep. aware of. Um, and I guess this is my my final note on it. If you are willing to go to an event and give them money and establish that trust, you are therefore giving them the responsibility to make the wisest decision to do so. Please continue that as the track and the effort in what's to come. If you really don't trust them to make the best decision, then I'm not sure why you decided to go in the first place. Do you know? Like... And, and maybe we don't ever think of it in that comparison, but that's really the, what it comes down to, I think, is mm-hmm. if I'm willing to give my money, it's like it's any transaction. You know, it's like if, um, you know, Tony's going to make something for me, you know, custom and I give him money, I'm trusting and giving him the responsibility to deliver on the goods. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, like like that's 
that's how that goes, you know? So if I don't feel that I have that, then I probably shouldn't be doing that investment to begin with. Um, Fair. You know, so like Tony says, I think it's the best, like be patient, you know, give it the time. I know it's disruptive. I know it's confusing and can, you know, really kind of throw things sideways or whatever, but you know, it, this is, this is what we do. You know, it's called life. Everything's yeah. shifting and moving around. And I have yeah. two thoughts to add is one, make sure you're getting, if you're getting news, get it from reputable sources. Don't listen to, Hey, friend on Facebook said this. No, go actually to CDC, go to CNN, Go to news sources, not Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, likewise, uh, recognize that we're going to have to change our behavior. Uh, one thing I really wish we had was a counter to show how many times each of us have touched our face. I think mm -hmm. Gary wins. He, 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 <laughs> he did it the least. No, in a good way. Here, here's, the oh. thing is, here's the thing is, is <laughs> no one can see me. So they haven't. The only only the, the listeners are being able to see I, me. So I, I might I, have won myself. I I I probably I know I probably touched my face a lot. And I've and this like knowing now, like I, I I know that and it's the worst thing to like think about like shit. Like how many times do I fucking touch my face? Like Trust. We even we even had a humorous moment at work recently at a meeting about that very like not the meeting about that, but it came up in the subject was about how often we subconsciously touch things and are just unaware of it. Like you have an itch, you have a scratch, like you have a, a, an agitation or whatever, and you don't even think twice of it. You're like you touch your nose, you touch your eyes, you touch your face, you touch your mouth. Like you like if you have facial hair, like you touch your beard, like you you know you touch your glasses and inadvertently touch like this side of your face. Like there's so much that we don't pay attention to so yeah we're all like probably going through a weird neurosis like thing now where we're just like trying to not touch ourselves ha! but i'm gonna give you credit because the, one of the first things you did was do hand sanitizer on your hand before you touched your face well all right though no, so here's the thing that happened i muted my line and i coughed and i was pissed because I had a post nasal drip and that's why I coughed, but nobody knows that. And I coughed into my hand and then I was mad that I coughed into my hand because I'm supposed to cough into my elbow or my sleeve. And I was like, God damn it. Like I can't. <laughs> it's all about but instinct. You, the point is you right. changed your behavior. <laughs> Yay, Gary. Well, yeah, to, to be fair, I grabbed my little, little bottle of san hand sanitizer, you know, which also kind of looks like a bottle of lubricant, but that's another issue. Um, <laughs> please don't get those intermixed by accident, people. <laughs> Especially silicone lube. Oh, mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyways, so stop touching your face. Don't hoard... Uh, mask wash your hands hand sanitizer is 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 good nowadays um um what else oh a, a, if you want to do some puzzles and possibly help out with this whole coronavirus thing there's a site called fold.it uh if you've ever heard of folding at home which is a little program that you can put in your computer and when you're not using your computer it uses your cycles to help research uh, uh, um, the folding of proteins i don't know the specific scientific knowledge of how it works but it is research that uh, scientists use in order to help uh, combat viruses fold that mm. it does have a puzzle that you can do as kind of like a game sort of thing um, which uh, is basically you making decisions instead of your computer trying to make decisions and trying to do that and whatever your puzzle results and everything is helps to do that research of uh, folding mm. proteins, um, mm. which deals with trying to figure out how to basically uh, deactivate the virus from replicating. So mm. it doesn't really kill the virus. It just stops it from multiplying and it kind of just mm -hmm. dies off on its own or something like that. Um, right. I don't know this. Again, I'm not a scientist. I don't know the specifics, but it was something that was on the Daily Tech News show they mentioned. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, uh, so uh, you can check that out uh, for ways. Um, uh, 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 and practice uh, uh, social distancing. Uh, so air hugs instead of regular hugs. Um, <laughs> uh, air kisses instead of regular kisses. 
uh, uh, um, and uh, Chatterbait is your friend. <laughs> Love or, it. Pornhub, or Pornhub if you don't care about, about it being a live stream. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, oh, and uh, don't get mad at, at event organizers. Just be disappointed, but don't be mad at the organizers. It's not the I'm fact. not mad. They're being I'm just, just disappointed. Disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> I know, which recognize worse, they're doing it in your beh- in your behest. Yeah, I mean they they right. know you probably get sick from kennel cough, but they'd rather you get sick from kennel cough instead of the coronavirus uh, or, or COVID nineteen specifically. Because as I said, there's several different versions of coronavirus. Some of them are okay, or you know Fact. bad because you, know, yeah. you can take care of it fine. But uh, COVID nineteen not so so hot we don't want to spread it so let's let's be responsible that's a long show i'm just gonna say that and that's <laughs> uh but hey important the, the mm-hmm. thing for the day so if you're going back into the archives and listening to this who knows maybe we've come up with treatments or or something to help stop the spread and Everything's back on and everything's normal again by the time you hear this. Might be a long time. In the meantime, you can contact us and let us know your horror stories at uh, CubsOutLoud.com where you can uh, visit our website. Uh, you can shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361 Talk. That's 361-265-8255. Uh, phone sex is really good for this time. Uh, you can uh, follow some various social media outlets of such as Instagram, Facebook, t- Tumblr, Twitter, and of course on YouTube. At Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL, you can join our entourage chat and chat us up, uh, which is another great way to to socialize with people. At tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, if you would like to know when we're planning to do these shows, you can uh, check out our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Uh, you can... Um, uh, purchase merchandise such as a Consent is My Foreplay shirt, uh, which both uh, Damon and I are wearing. I'm, I've got the bear. He's got the leather. We also have uh, a pup and trans uh, on the store as well. Uh, that's Zazzle.top top level domain of your country of choice slash um, Cubs Out Loud. So dot com dot uh, co dot uk, etc. Uh, you can also become a patron. We love you patrons for uh, supporting us and helping us out. Uh, I had an idea for another uh, uh, equipment upgrade, but I'll talk about that uh, after the show. But you can help that help us uh, take care of that at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, you can also, if you just want to just send us a one-time donation, you can go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Also, I did update the donate link on our website, so... The, the donate uh, PayPal link there should take you to the same place as well. Um, you can uh, rate us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe to us through Google Play and Spotify. You can find me anywhere in the internet. It says box set, box puppy, box cub, box something or other. Uh, if you wish to find me, you can find me as uh, most bear sites as Theater Cub 79 or I am pup underscore umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabber73. If you want to follow my Twitter feed, which may get very active for the next 14 to 30 day cycle, <laughs> depending on <laughs> what happens, uh, it's G-A-R-B-E-A-R-7-3-X-X-X. Tony, if anyone would like to get in touch with you in the social media landscape, can they do that? And how would they do so? Uh, most of the places I'm located on, I like Twitter, etc. I'm on as Cubs is. Um, I am on Facebook as well. I don't have an Instagram because I don't really do pictures, but <laughs> that's fine. Cubs is spelled C U B Z I Z. Yes. Or C U B Z I Z for those of you who have the In other pronunciation. Countries who go that route because Z is so close to other things. I don't know. Something like that. In any case, <laughs> with that, uh, say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.